Good morning, pregame crew. How are we doing? I am having dropped frames. One second. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna watch these drop frames. If they get worse, I may have to tag in Jason. Hey, Tammy, hey, Raymond, Topher, Chris, thank you, Chuck. Hey, Veronica, Mira Asia, John, MG, I appreciate you. Hey, Visuals, Scott, good morning, good morning. It is Friday, January 21st, 8.23 a.m. Eastern 624 Mountain Time. Okay, I'm going to re shut down my modem and just I'll restart. Hold, give me one second. Okay, let's see how this is. Can you hear me? Let's do a ch another check-in, please. This is so much fun, technical difficulties. Audiovisual check number two, please. Hey, Michael, Edwin, Joel, Jay, Mal. Hey, thanks, Chuck. All good, okay, I had to reboot my modem. Let's see if this does the trick. Hey, visuals, Matt, Davey, baby, my friend. Hey, scripts, Christopher, Chris. I appreciate all of you being here. More importantly, being patient with my little technical blip yesterday and today. We will get through this. Awesome. Good morning. Well, per my calendar, we don't have any big uh, economic data in three minutes, so that's good. What option calls expiring going to do on a market on the decline? We'll talk about all that. We will talk about it. Here's my notes for today. So Michael, thanks. You did a Vanna White for me. You gave me a good opening. Thank you. So here's the thing, the list of things that makes bears really, really, really comfortable. The most bullish charts out there are VIX the US two-year yield, the US 10-year yield, and metals. Tick was extreme yesterday, and I'll show you what, I was, what I'm talking about. And then monthly OPEX, meaning op options expirations today. It's not quad witching, it's not dividend day, it's not the quarter end, but January leap date has the highest volume of leaps than any other month. If you just go look at any of your names, you can look at Caterpillar, Deer. If you want to buy leaps, you can buy leaps right now for January 23 and the January 24. That may be your only options. So a lot of volume comes in today and all that has to come off the books. There's a lot of gamma stuff that happens underneath for all of those things to happen. So it's all things we need to be aware of. Do we need to understand it inside and out? Nope. But we do need to be aware there's things that actually we don't understand that are happening underneath the surface and it should make us have a cause to pause. All right. You came here for technical analysis. You know what, King Ozzy? I'm sorry, but that was really funny. Yeah, hit the like button, why don't you? I'm Chart Gal Lori. I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. You have found yourself at the pregame show, and what I do is go over indices, commodities, crypto, and movers and shakers of the day. And my goal is to get you prepared for the day. And the best preparation I may give you is to sit on your hands. And I may give you a setup that actually comes to fruition. It may be the best trade of the month. Who knows? But either way, we're going to approach things methodically and cautiously. Okay. It looks like I have no drop frames and we have one more minute. Let's see. I saw a request early on. I think it was NVDA. Let me look at that. 
For those that get here early, they get their request done first. Yeah, ARC was great. I thought ARC yesterday worked out. I got profit on it and I sold it when it changed five minute trend. So NVDA is definitely one of my favorite names out there, already in that. Why is it one of my favorite names? Well, obviously it's semiconductors and we're looking for a monthly high or low and we're sitting on the monthly eight EMA, which has been a place to buy every time it's touched since September of 2019. So daily is approaching oversold. So on this gap down, who asked about this? Uh, Lisa, on this gap down, I think we're getting warmer. I know you asked me about this uh, privately. We have a gap here. Is that filled yet? We have a gap here at 23355. I would definitely put that on my chart. And then 23043, a prior high, that may came, come into play today. So not all gaps have to be filled. We have one here at 209, and I'm sure I could keep going through this chart and find more. So just remember, not all gaps have to be filled. If that were the case, then we'd be looking down at 209. Got one here at 14684. So we have lots below, but that more pertinent one is the one that's right below us at 233. Once that gets at 233.55, once that gets filled, that may get interesting. All right. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's keep our wits about us. Let me introduce myself. I'm Chark Al Lori. I am part of the Chart Guys community. If you're interested in checking us out, we're at chartguys.com. We teach technical analysis, and what I do every weekday is get people prepared for the day. Being prepared may be you get the best trades of your life because of all of your hard work, or we sit on our hands. Either way, we will be prepared. So if you're interested in my chart setup, it's on the screen now. And I'd really appreciate if you could hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notify button, just hit a button, but not the exit button. So what we have going on here is we have four hour bear flag setups on our major indices. That doesn't have bulls feeling warm and fuzzy. Who feels warm and fuzzy? Bears. So if you're just now joining us, let's go over this list again. Here are the things that are making bears really, really comfortable. The most bullish charts out there are the VIX, the US two year and 10 year yield, the bonds, metals. Tick was absolutely extreme yesterday. And then monthly OPEX, lots of options coming off the books today, highest volume leap expiration of the whole year. So gamma happenings are un happening underneath the surface that we need to be aware of that could bring about more volatility. So let's, <laughs> okay, oh, King Ozzy. I know he, who you are now, you're the king. You take all the good notes for TCG members. All right, let's look at VIX. Let's look at my first note here. This chart on the daily has, on the weekly has a squeeze, which happens often with the VIX. And on the daily it has a squeeze and we're over the 50 RSI. When RSI gets overbought, which over here, it got up to 78. We could possibly be looking in the other direction and that would approximately put it near that 35. I don't know exactly where I'd have to turn on my back burner indicator but we are right at resistance. Do y'all know how important this is? This is super important for this resistance to hold, for the market bulls to get a bounce. I don't feel confident that this level is going to hold. If not, next resistance, 3082 and then 3532. I can't believe it's actually coming out of my mouth that one of the more bullish charts out there are the VIX, but it is. I'm telling you folks, it's one of the most bullish charts out there. Let's look at the other ones. US two year, look at this chart, look at this daily bull flag. Up 572% in the last five months. That shows the rise in inflation is very exponential and this measures things in a more recent way versus the 10 year. The 10 year, I wouldn't say it's a daily bull flag. We're, we are getting a weekly bearish reversal candle. If we can just close with that upper wick, I'd like for it to turn red, but I don't think that's going to happen. But overall, the US 10 year has no problems whatsoever with this chart on the daily and neither the, does the US 10 year. Those, that's a fly in the ointment for the market bulls. And then finally gold. Gold is shaping up to be a pretty chart. So here on the weekly, look at this squeeze. The last time we squeezed and we broke bull, look at this run up. 
We ran up, what was that? 250 points, 240 points. So I'm looking for a lower high compared to 1879, but these this gold bullishness, even though we're slightly red now, that's when people get scared, they run for the gold. And this is an asset, a risk off asset saying, I'm scared, I don't trust the dollar, I don't trust the stock market, so I'm gonna buy gold. But here's the thing, when the house is burning down, you're just gonna throw everything and run out the door. So gold will get trashed if, or not will, I have no idea, but could get trashed along with everything else if the market really starts going down even harder and changing even more longer term trends. Let me go back to my notes. And then tick. This is what stood out to me yesterday that showed me this one of these things is not like the other ones. So we got extreme ticks on, what was that, on Wednesday. We got negative 1400, negative 1100, negative 1174. And we had some on Tuesday. The opening ones I don't pay as much attention to because those can be extreme to both sides. They don't really count for me. It's what happens after the open that counts. And yesterday really stood out. This was some extreme tick negative values. So that can mean one of two things. Everyone's throwing out the baby with the bathwater along with Max Capitch. So everybody's done with the market, throwing the baby out with the bathwater or we have reached max capitulation or we're close. But the one thing that doesn't make me think it's max capitulation is ADD didn't look like that. Let me go to ADD over here. ADD looked terrible, but we closed down here at negative 1500, but that's not an extreme reading. Look at Tuesday. We were in negative 2000. So that tells me this tick is not max capitulation or possibly not max capitulation. When you see this type of reading, and this was the shot across the bow right here, second shot across the bow. And then once you start seeing these readings, it's time to get out of longs and possibly get into shorts because this these type of readings, they don't care about RSI. RSI goes out the window when it's this extreme. So we have to know context. And I need to talk about that a lot more. Let me type that out. Context of market is everything. Because if we're bullish, let's say we're bullish NVIDIA and we say we're looking for that monthly high or low, daily's approaching oversold, I'm going to buy the dip. We don't buy the dip when the tick looks like this. We don't, the context has changed. In a normal bullish monthly uptrend, when you get four hour and daily oversold, you start buying the Kmart special. But context tells you this is not a favorable environment to buy dips. This is a favorable environment to sell the rip. So BTD needs to turn to STR, short the rips, until the bulls show their face. And finally, a note I wanted to show you, if you're looking at weekly bear volume and you say, eh, it's not that bad, even though we have one more day, but it's not that bad, Monday we were closed. This is only three days of trading. This was five. So weekly bear volume, we're not gonna be able to measure apples to apples on weekly charts this week because we only had four days. So if you see elevated weekly bear volume on your chart, that's a pretty bad chart because that's only three days so far, but four day work week, trading week. So please keep all of those things in mind. Okay, that is the speech. Now let's go over technical analysis. So your key resistance, let's look at it on the hourly. Your key resistance is 4477, 4477. Key support 4429. This has all the signs, all the signs of a bear flag. We have declining bull volume on the oversold bounce. And all these bounces do is set up the bears really well for the day. When we bounce overnight, which was here, we bounce overnight here, here, where's the other one? Here, what did it do? Cool off RSI, cool off RSI, cool off RSI, whoops, cool off RSI. So please, please, please be careful with these, this buying of the dip mentality. We're just not in that, that environment and RSI is cooling off overnight, setting up the bears very well. 
The coolest thing that could happen today, and cool depends on which chair you're sitting in, but the coolest thing that could happen is let's bring it on down, let's get the RSI nice and oversold again, and then let's change the character. So the character of the market has been go up overnight and then open, get a false bounce, and then pull it down at the end of the day. Wouldn't it be cool to change the, the character of the market and say, okay, we're gonna flush it good, trap some bears this morning, and then we're gonna rip it and keep ripping it. That would be the coolest thing. How will I know what's happening? That sounded like Whitney Houston. How will I know? I told you I wouldn't sing and I still do it. Um, how will I know if this is a change the character? Tick, 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 tick. Tick is gonna let us know. So you see the green line? That's our five minute eight EMA. We can even look at patterns inside RSI, inside moving averages. They tell us things. Look at this head and shoulders on our five minute yesterday. And then boom, we're below the zero line. I call that the tick trick. Tick trick, meaning the eight EMA on the five minute, if it stays above the zero line, we are in a bullish market. And if we have sustained ticks over 600, that is a trending day. So if our eight EMA drops below the zero line on the five minute, we're beginning to trend down. And when we start getting sustained ticks below 600, we're having a trend day down. This told us, GTFO, get the freak out right there when it dropped below the zero line. I have to have context to trade. Maybe that means I'm not as expert level of trader as others, but I like to have all the tools in my tool belt that I can to help me understand what's going on underneath the hood. I may know it's bearish, but I wanna know the intensity. Tick tells us the intensity. All right, I don't know what's gonna to happen today. I can give you levels and I tell you if we drop below 4429, we're in pretty bad shape and I would not be looking bullish for sure. Your next support below is 431875. Let me see if I can get back over here. Look where we're entering. When we drop below 4429, we're entering, entering an area where we went up very fast. When we go up fast, we wipe the order book out. And we come back into that area, we don't typically just kind of float down. We push down hard because we have no supports underneath us. So please remember, if we drop below 4429, we're not going to be in a good place. Captain Obvious, right? Resistance, 14816 on NASDAQ and support. 14731 below that excuse me what did i say support 14602 my bad y'all your next support is 14585 so that is a little warm and fuzzy that we do have a support right below us on nasdaq us 10 year i just continue to show you this to show, of course if you're going to the grocery store and you bought a gallon of milk lately i don't have to show you this you know inflation's going through the roof so and that raises more uh the possibility of more interest rate hikes in the future. U.S. 10-year, bullish. We need the U.S. 10-year to set that four-hour lower high and roll over again for, to give tech a little bounce. RTY is super weak. If you're not buying, if they're not buying Netflix and they're throwing it, throwing that away for sure, then they sure don't want DKNG or Penn Gaming or AMC. If you don't want Amazon, you don't want AMC. So on a bounce, a short the rip bounce, I would say RTY should be your candidate for shorting bounces. So if you're in a situation to short a bounce, I would be looking to short RTY bounces. I just flipped, didn't mean to. So on RTY, resistance 2031, 2104, support 2002. Yeah, if you could hit the like button, I'd really appreciate it. And your support below 2002 is way down at 1920 because again, we're entering an area where we kind of went up exponentially fast. So careful below psychological level 2000 on RTY. That's an important level to the point where I'm going to set an alert. All right, YM, we do have a support below. This is the December 1st low, 33928. So we do have a level nearby if we break the overnight low of 34320. My tick chart setup, Joe, is just the 8 EMA. 
just the 8 EMA. I want that quicker 8 EMA. Tell me when I'm trending down below the zero line. And I plotted these manually, 600, zero, and negative 600. Thank you for your question. Okay. Resistance on YM, 34691. Don't forget these levels over here. Prior support could act as resistance if we could really get going. And if you're a FIB person, guy or gal, don't forget your 0.382. So if Dow gets over 34725, we are more likely to negate the bear flag possibility on NASDAQ. If we get above 14884, we are more likely to negate the bear flag possibility. But look where we are with NASDAQ and Dow. So NASDAQ's bounce is definitely not as good as the Dow. So as far as strength this morning, YM is stronger then RTY, then ES, and then NASDAQ. So Netflix is really weighing down the uh, NASDAQ. It's artificially low in my opinion, but it doesn't matter. Price is price. So we just have Netflix really weighing on the NASDAQ. So careful with your tech long names. And Lisa, that's to you too on NVDA. I should have mentioned that. So NASDAQ coming down hard with Netflix it could weigh on NVIDIA today. We may get a better entry next week or the next. VIX, we need it to hold that key resistance. We need it to fall down. Bitcoin, we're, uh, resistance 38940. Let me look at this on the hourly. 39300 and then support 37704. This is not a good look for Bitcoin, and we just keep cooling off RSI with these little bear flag bounces. If you're a dip buyer, you want to see, let's see, I want to show you this. Pretend like this is a chart, okay? Pretend like this is a stock chart. If you're a dip buyer, you want to see this. This is beyond waterfall. This is waterfall. We're straight down. No cooling off RSI, just straight down. So pretend like if this where Amazon and it looked like this, and you're coming up on a key price level, you wanna dip by that. What we don't wanna dip by is the pull down, bounce, pull down, bounce, pull down, bounce. Then what are they doing? They're doing that yo-yo, walking the dog, walking the dog, cooling off RSI, we don't want that. Ethereum, this looks a little more, oh, that was five, man, I thought that was an hour. I'm like, whoa. Resistance 2900, support 2731. Your next support below this morning's low is 2651 gold. Yes, RSI 50 line, I manually, it's actually on there for the settings for basic RSI. So that middle band right there is 50. And so it's already set up. Sorry about that. But sometimes I will do a horizontal line just so I can, it can scream out at me and I will say, Tell me RSI, or not tell me, this is an alert. So I'll just do that, just to remind me, this is my key level, don't forget it. Gold, gold next resistance, 1873, 1879. Excuse me, let me go to the hourly, that was a daily. 1843 and 1848, support is down at 1831 and 1828. Longer term, gold's looking good, I know silver, led the breakout first but gold's looking pretty good oil's getting a good bounce after it flushed down remember i told y'all here that joey jungle funk he messaged me and said that he was bearish oil and it kind of didn't make sense because we were over that that uh resistance let me show you what resistance i'm talking about this one we were over that level but on larger term time frames he was measuring things and he posted all of that in commodities channel and tcg and man was that a good call wasn't it that was ninja level stuff. 5% drop since I shared that analysis with you. Oh, sorry. On oil support, 83.47, 82.78. Your next resistance is 85.18. Prior support could serve as resistance and then up at 87.10. Nat gas is trying to get a bounce going. It is ugly. Not cute. Not a good look. Resistance 3966402, support 3865, and then down at 3781. Apple. Apple. So what I'm looking at on Apple is a long. 
So I should have written my notes here. Here we have a support of 16225. I, I like this bullish divergence. I'm trying to remember what was I looking at. But I like Apple long. I know that's crazy. But only if we flush 16225 and get this hourly RSI oversold. So I am looking for some oversold bounces, but on some of our key names. So I'm considering Apple still in a weekly uptrend. I know we lost this here, but that was not a, a strong pivot for me. And we have earnings January 27th next week. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm struggling to remember. I didn't put my notes on here. I like Apple long. I like that flush that we had yesterday. RSI got oversold. We're cooling it off in after hours, but one more flush down, and I like Apple to the long side. Affirm. Affirm got killed yesterday on that Piton news and had a beautiful bounce. It got, I know I wrote it on this one. Nope. Okay, now I have to go look. Sorry, y'all. A firm got a downgrade. So a firm got a downgrade. It has a lot of pre-market volume, but let me show y'all the downgrade. Look at this. A firm Barclays cuts price target to 105. Is that really a downgrade when price is at $62? So I would love a bottom fish of 59.21 on a firm or a top fish of 67.23. Of course, it could just stay in the middle of yesterday's very large zone all day today. But if it were to get down to 59.21, I would like a long, let me put myself an alert in case I'm interested in it. And this is all context. If the market is pulling down, then you shouldn't be looking at any of these names long. This is my queen of the mountain, Ford. So Ford has a ton of pre-market volume. We close this gap. The next gap is at 2101. We're right there. So fill 2101. So I'm going to say, tell me. Then I know that gap is filled. And this is one of the healthier charts out there. On the weekly, we are in an uptrend. So on the weekly, in an uptrend, four hour oversold. I like this long at 2101. This is your QOTM. We played it short here, and I told you I've lost my mind. We played it short here. I told you I know I've lost my mind. Well, I'm flipping the script. I like this long weekly uptrend, four hour oversold. Netflix, ninjas only. And if you don't know what I mean, I'm saying it only if you're a consistently profitable trader with very fast hand-eye coordination and math calculations in your brain, should you be messing with names with high volatility like Netflix or Piton. So on Netflix, I think I have the next supports. The next supports are 39786, 39352, and 38599. This was a gap fill. Let me go show you. Ugh. Was it a gap? So 39352 is a prior resistance. No, it wasn't a gap. So 39360. We're right there. We bounce right at that level, 39360 and after hours. Look, we bounce at 398. So I think 394 area could be a dip by area for Netflix. You're gonna have to use your particular fishing pole. And let me give you a tip. I don't use this uh, verbiage a lot, but I really like it and I'm starting to gravitate toward it a little bit. To, instead of opening, range use ORB opening range breakout so that's the first 15 orb first 15 minutes so let's see let's say that Netflix opens up and it puts in a high here I'm just gonna Let's say it puts in a high here, and that's a candle. Just play with me here. My imagination, we're all looking at the same thing. A beautiful chart, right? So we put in a high here, and a low here. And this is in, is there a, a vertical line? Yeah, right here. Y'all just pretend this is the first 15 minutes. So then this becomes our orb. 
our opening range level. So we are looking at our opening range and then we're watching for a breakout outside of that range to the upside or to the downside. So the first 15 minutes of the day, you sit on your hands and you plot it, okay? Here's the high at the end of that 15 minutes. Here is the low. Now, the trade setup becomes comes after the first 15 minutes and then you buy a break out of above that first 15 minute level or a break down beyond that first 15 minute level. So I've never explained it this way. I've been really working on my terminology and how to give you fishing poles for the first 15 minutes because I know a lot of you are very interested in that. You can use the orb strategy, break out or break down strategy. I should call it break because it's either break out or down. The first 15 minutes, I really think it's a good strategy. And go back test it. Go back test it on names and say, okay, the first 15 minutes, there was the high, there was the low. Did it give you a good indication? Because we always say if it makes a new low of day, then we've got a problem. Well, what if it makes, after the first 15 minutes, it makes a new low of day? That's telling you something. So that may be something that helps someone out there. Oh, oh my God, goodness. I keep this name on my list for my dad. And we have a weekly uptrend. Four hour is oversold and it has a monthly dividend of a quarter. And the next dividend is January 31st. So every month it has a dividend of a quarter. So I'm looking to add this to my dad's account. It has such a low risk, meaning that the support is nearby. So I like this if you're looking for a swing. I'm trying to give y'all a smorgasbord. Pfizer, I like to the long side. Oh, and O got an upgrade and so did Pfizer. Pfizer, we're looking for a weekly high or low. Four hour is not oversold, but it's holding, it's a relative outperformer actually. So resistance is 53.96 and 54.52, support 53.07. And we got a dividend coming up next week. 40 cents on Pfizer. So you dividend peeps, those are the two things I'm looking at. And I may wait till next week, but I think they're setting up pretty well. And I think the upgrades were a big lob. Peloton, ninjas only, don't complain in here if you're not a consistently profitable trader. I don't wanna see you in this name. The amount of volume Netflix and Peton has, which Netflix is way more impressive, but the CEO came out after hours yesterday and said that story of them pausing bike production and tread production is false. So you could use the ORB strategy, you could use a stair step strategy, ninjas only. And finally, XLE, thanks Blue Dog. Why 15 and not first 10? No particular reason if I have found more often than not, my best trades are 15 minutes after the open on Amazon. Y'all know that's one of my specialties or one of the things I really focus on. I wouldn't say that Amazon's behaved well over the last four months, but the first 15 minutes, my best trade normally comes at, look here, at 7.45 a.m. I actually have an alarm set for 7.45 a.m. And I wanna take my first trade around that time if I find a setup. So I found the first 15 minutes really establishes a range. And XLE, I've been picking on it. I'm gonna to continue to pick on it. Any bounce, I, I doubt we get up 64.88. But on any bounce, I would love to short XLE. All right, thank you. Uh, here they are. So if you ever forget what I was talking about, I have my list over here. So I like O, it's a realty company, it's a REIT, and then PFE. O for the, is definitely a good dividend. Hit the like button, please. Three more likes, please. Okay. Someone had a, a coin. I want to go, go over coin. I cut y'all short this week and the technical difficulties, I feel like I need to hang on a little bit longer and make sure all your questions are answered. Now this is the walk in the dog one. See, careful, careful. They are not letting this thing get oversold and they're just able to push it on down. Hourly is getting oversold finally. So you're at 210 and coin is related to crypto. Don't forget. Ugh. You're almost in black dirt breakdown. 208's all you got left. That'll be interesting. I don't see it holding with crypto week and the market week, but my crystal ball is definitely in the shop. So 
as always, I don't try to predict. I'll just trade price action. I went over IWMJ is super weak. Anything below 2000 on RTY is pretty rough and we're dropping below that ever so important 200. And just so you know, we have a little gap fill over here on IWM at 197.62. Maybe, maybe IWM could find a pause there. I love alerts. I don't trade them all, but it's fun. And I, I also notify the room when these alerts go off. I post it in the TCG room so people, if they want to trade it, they can. Sure, Brent. I'll go over Z. What Z happen? <laughs> Monthly inside bars. And if the bulls are lucky, this will hold. But it doesn't look too promising. 52.95 has to hold. That's December's low. So 52.95 and then 52.57 are your supports. Not looking too froggy. And on any bounce, bears will be waiting. Right there. Bitcoin, you want me to do it again? Sure. So the slope of the EMA, how fast and how much this has turned down, that tells you the speed in which bears are driving the bus. Bears are driving this bus super fast, and you can tell by the slope of the EMAs. Weekly is not oversold. I would like a dip by a Bitcoin a lot more if it were oversold, because now we don't have support nearby. Next support, I guess, is like 30,000. We are we have entered an area of no support, so we're in danger, danger with Bitcoin, and they've been steadily cooling off RSI with these little bounces. So not doesn't look too great. XBI, and I'm done. QQQ is my NASDAQ analysis, four hour potential bear flag. XBI, weekly's oversold. We have a little sneaky support here at 89.45. Nope, lost that. What did I, oh, I ticked the wrong one, Durr. 89.45. That's your next support on XBI. And we're not oversold on the one hour. So remember that. Just because larger term time frames are oversold, hourly is not oversold, four hours not oversold, 30 minutes not oversold, 15 minutes not oversold, you get it. So this is not looking too good for the bulls because everything's cooled off and we're just coming up right on that 50 RSI. All right, that's it for me. Thank you for joining me. Have a great weekend. Use stop losses. Sit on your hands. Don't panic. Emotions are not for professional traders. They have no place in trading. Now, if you messed up, you need to sit with that and feel that to the core. I'm okay with you feeling that emotion. But otherwise, fear and making decisions based out of fear, that's the people that professional traders take money from. So don't be that person. All right. See y'all. Are y'all here? What do you call that when the uh, performer comes back on stage? The curtain call, what do you call that? I don't know. Are you here? I just wanted to go over one more request. XLP for George. Oh. That's not what I want to do. Come on. Encore, there we go. See, Friday brain, what is going on? Oh, oh, <laughs> my microphone was on the keyboard. Okay, XLP. I just lost RSI. I just kind of messed up everything. XLP doesn't look bad, actually. That's a weekly bull flag. That doesn't look bad at all. Hmm. Good one, George. I like a bottom fish of, let's say, 75.50. All right. <laughs> it totally does differ. All right. Love y'all. Now I'm really leaving. Bye.